Mossberg. Model 142K, 22 caliber bolt action rifle. You know, coming off the video of the uh, New Haven 600AT. Went trap shooting with a friend of mine. He had seen the video and he said, that was a really cool video you did. You know, Mossberg, they're a really cool shotgun company. And I thought about that, like as I was actually shooting at that station. Going through my mind was shotgun company. So many people look at Mossberg as a shotgun company. I wonder if they even realize that they started with a 22 caliber pistol and moved into 22 caliber rifles at the very beginning. That's where they cut their teeth. And in my opinion, that's where they really shined. So that made me want to bring a couple of Mossberg 22s right out into the open immediately. Put everything else, shelve everything else, and just put these out there. I think Mossberg deserves it. Let's check it out. That's right, the Mossberg Model 142K. Uh, it is a pre-68 22 caliber rifle, shooting a long rifle and short. I think that's all it says on the barrel. We're going to take a look. That's what I have written down here, and usually I copy exactly. I'm sure they meant longs in there, but uh, capacity, uh, this is a box magazine. Another thing we're going to talk about with these Mossbergs, these box magazines. This is a 10-rounder. I think originally they came with 7-rounders. I think they were Mossberg 10-rounders floating around. Not really sure. i got to be honest with you. Uh, research on these magazines is very difficult. Uh, a lot more information on the rifles themselves. Um, this is grooved for a scope mount, obviously. And we have a uh, cool little period scope on here. This thing has an 18-inch barrel. Uh, they were made from 1953 to 1956. The, that's the K model, uh, 53 to 56. And uh, I can't date it any, I can't narrow it down. I, I have to just give a 53 to 56 window for this guy. So, uh, yeah, so what does this K thing mean? K is just a setup for the sights. The 142 the base model 142 that was made from 49 to 57 and it had a peep sight it was the the um, Mossberg S108 rear peep sight and the S109 front sight that had like wings on it, it was set up kind of like a uh, military like you know what I mean which is what talk about it this is what got the military kind of interested in these uh, in these things uh, as trainers and uh, the 142k was made from 53 to 57 just had a blade front sight which is an s133 and an adjustable fixed rear which is the 134 and uh yeah that's about it <laughs> no okay so the mossberg here's the thing about mossberg now um Mossberg was founded by a Swedish immigrant named Oscar Frederick Mossberg. Came Mossberg and Sons. He put the company together with his a couple of his sons. He was a former Ivor Johnson employee. God knows where else. Uh, the guy definitely knocked around in the firearms industry. Um, but in 1919, he started his own company um, with a handgun called the Brownie Pistol. It was very distinctive looking. It had four barrels, but it didn't fire any of those barrels uh, simultaneously. It had a patented firing pin that it was kind of like a rotating firing pin assembly. So every time you pulled the trigger, it would be like the minute hand going around on a clock and it would fire. It would hit it 15 minutes past the hour, then at half past, then at quarter two, then on the hour like that. It would hit like four different places as you pulled the trigger because it would was canned that way so it would be a 
four shot um, without anything else moving except the hammer and the firing pin assembly. You know what I mean? A uh, pretty cool idea, you know, and uh, it was popular. People liked it. But he immediately moved into uh, 22, um, 22 rifles. And uh, in, 19, in the 1930s, they introduced some single shot 22s. In the late 30s, they expanded into um, different types of uh, bolt action like repeaters with heavy barrels, smooth bores, left handed guns and various sites they they expanded everything the military took notice of this and said wow these are these are pretty cool and they ordered military trainers those were like the model 44 rifles and uh they were off and running that there was that was definitely their bread and butter were the 22s um what we could take a look at here is our uh Let's take a quick look at this. This is our chrono chronology of Mossberg firearms. Always have trouble getting that out. So yeah, here's the Model K, which was uh, their first, 1922. This was their first slide action rifle was this Model K right here where I put the arrow. Now this Model K, very interesting. Uh, this is not a Model K video, so I'm not gonna get too into it, but the bottom line is, where do I have this here? Um, I would take a look if you're interested in researching um, this patent that Savage put out on the Savage model 1914, um, which is basically looks like the same rifle to me. There's, there's definitely some, some kind of connection there. And uh, this Savage patent was issued to uh, the assigner was Sears Roebuck. And Sears, Roebuck, and Meridian is, uh, Meriden, sorry. It's Meriden is the name of that company, um, the rifle company. And they were involved as well. I'm not sure if it's exactly the same exact rifle. I hear the lockup on it is different, depending on, you know, like the bolt locks up the top on one side or on the other side on the other one. I, I don't know, but I have a Model 14. I have a Model 29 also, Savage Model 29. They say those are similar. Uh, if I ever ran into a Model K, I'd probably pick it up, and we'd be doing that video to uh, really get to the bottom of that. If you want to do some research on your own, go ahead. But we're going to pass by to get to these single-shot rifles. And then here's where you started to get into heavy barrels and smooth bores, left-handed versions here uh, into the th these 30 Model 30s, then the Model 40s. And then uh, this is in World War II, these U.S. trainers, where you say U.S. near some of these. Whenever you find these, they're always missing parts. I almost bought a couple of these, but I'm not going to buy them when they're missing the peep sight or missing this, missing that. These parts are going to be just finding, like, a little screw-on adjuster for a peep sight could cost as much as the whole rifle. You know, these rifles are only a couple hundred bucks. These, the sight could be on eBay for 300 That's weird. So it's just better to get them all together, and I just can't find them that way, you know. And then you pay attention to, like here, their box fed. These are the single shots. Then these are bolt action box magazine, box fed. So these will have kind of like the same. Then it goes to tube fed, tube fed here for, for this group. After the military ones here, this group of the 40s series. And then there's a 50s series right here, tube fed through buttstock. We get through that era of Mossberg, and we get into these 100 series. This is where we're at right now. Um, here's the 142K. It says, same as 142K with open sights. Uh, oh, same. I think what they meant to say here is, same as the 142A with open sights. That's what they meant here, because the 142A, like I told you, box-fed... Fold down four end. We'll get to that. And here's the sights. It lists what the sights are, the peep sights. 142K. It should say same as 142A with open sights. Um, this 151 down here. We already did a video on. We have that guy. And, uh, yeah, so this is where we're at in the stage of things was just when we started to move into in the uh, 50s here, when we started to move into these. Uh, these bolt action rifles, the 100 series. 
So uh, this scope, what is it? It's a Weaver C6. It's like a period scope. It works really good on here. I like these lines. This this um, obviously comes off very easy. I kind of like it on this rifle, but I'm not sure. I might take it off because it's very interesting that if you could see in there, that's an adjustable rear sight. It's just not the normal elevator that you have here by just sliding this thing back and forth. It actually has a screw you could loosen to even move the sight side to side or up and down, little minute adjustments. Um, so yeah, let's just go head to toe here. So it's interesting. Do they call this a Monte Carlo stock? I'm not even sure. I think the Monte Carlo stock has something on the side. I'm not really sure what just this scallop right here means, but uh, it, uh, it has sling swivels. The side mounted sling it was originally a web sling. Um, but uh, I have this uh, leather sling on here now. And you see back here, these are interesting. These are always missing. These are the nubs that go in here to, there's a red one for fire and a green one for safe. And they're always missing. When you see these rifles, they're almost always gone. They sell them aftermarket, but you know what? I just assume I... If once you go with putting aftermarket stuff on it, if, I mean, if you had to, if it didn't function and you had to go with like some reproduction part, fine. But uh, if the rifle pushed these things out like it didn't want them in there, I'm okay with that. Um, but that's what you'll always see these two holes back here. Very rarely do you see anything in there. And uh, that's the reason why. Very interesting bolt angle here, huh? Has an interesting angle to it, the bolt. And, uh, but I like it. It makes it feel uh, really, uh, it's really easy to cycle. It feels cool when you cycle it. Now these mags, these mags are a whole big thing. Let's, let's get into that. This magazine will only fit certain guns. Doesn't just, just because you see one of these Mossbergs with one of these, one of these box mags doesn't mean they're all the same. Now, when you get into the magazines, I'm going to touch on it just a little bit. Here's an article. I always like to credit. Somebody got mad at me once that it was like so just some chat forum that somebody posted a picture and said something and they got mad saying I plagiarized them. Um, so I'll credit even some guy in a chat forum. I don't mind. T. Frank. This is back in 2018 on the rimfirecentral.com uh, website chat thread here. Um, this is the chat thread name i guess if you want to look it up yourself and um he th throws up some pictures of different mossberg magazines there's some text here what he's talking about i didn't really need to go into it like crazy i i learned what i needed to know um which was what i needed to know was let's see if i get this rifle it was a 3 52 for sale somewhere. Here's a picture of uh, that I took in the gun store of the uh, model number, just so that I wouldn't forget it. I didn't have anything to write it down. I just snapped the picture. And uh, this model, it didn't have a magazine. And um, I wanted to know if the Mo I knew I had a Mossberg with a box magazine, if it would have been the same magazine. And I could have just used it. I can only fire one rifle at a time. So if I would have just had to share a magazine between the two rifles, I would have been okay with that because it was very cheap without the magazine. Um, then I just, that's where I actually looked up, found this sitting outside in the car um, where it, it was not the same magazine. Um, not only that, quite a different magazine. Things had progressed from the uh, 100 series. Uh, to the 300 series in such a way that uh, like there were a lot of changes like here like for instance see like uh, see in this photo how it has like um, holes in the follower there was a clip on thing that went in there that would make this be able to fire shorts so it was like an adapter that went in the magazine to when you wanted to shoot shorts and um, not only that here in the, uh, let's just take a look here for just a second. This is Brownells Encyclopedia. So if we go to Brownells Encyclopedia on the 352, 
let's just a little bit. If we go to the 352 here, it actually says here, both models, that would be the 352 and the 352K they're talking about, again, it had to do with a site change. In this, in this one, though, the K was the one that had the peep sites, and it was the regular one that, that didn't, which is kind of weird. It went the other way. But um, they write here, both models feed from new Magic 3-Way Clip magazine that adjusts instantly to load short, long, or long rifle cartridges. I don't know if they're talking about that little piece that you put in there, or if this one has some kind of slider that you just move. I, I don't know. I don't know, but I knew one thing. Uh, by the way, for the 140, this doesn't even go back far enough to get to the 142 here, but I do have it listed here. Here's the 142 right here. And uh, here are the sight the parts to the site right here. How you see that for the 142K, we don't have those pieces. And uh, this is a really cool resource because you could check magazine compatibility. So R632 is what they're calling the part number for this magazine right here. So you would just be able to look through the uh, different models and see which ones shared the same magazine. Love that Brown Ellis Encyclopedia. So let's get into this guy a little bit more here now. So one of the features of this rifle is this folding monopod grip holder kind of thing. I'm not really sure what this thing is exactly for, but they put it out there for a few years. It was around for a while. They like to use it. Uh, when I got this rifle, there was a couple of things. Number one, somebody had, it looks like, polished the barrel, um, whether with steel wool or very, very fine sandpaper or something. You could see some scratch marks there, but for the most part, just kind of polished. And it's it's one of the things that kind of shied me away from it a little bit, but you could always re-blue, but I don't like to re-blue. I don't like to change anything. If I'm not happy with the condition that it's in right there, I'll usually bail. Let's take a look at the, uh... all right, let's see if that helps. That helped a little. So we got OF Mossberg and Sons Incorporated, New Haven, Connecticut, USA, model 142K. Oh, here it is. Yeah, 22 short and long rifle. How weird is that? No love for the longs. Huh. No other markings. Uh, there's a Weaver 22 tip off. There's the patent number for this uh, sculpt mount if you want to. Check that out. Maybe I'll pull that up and uh, get a picture of it right here. And it is a Weaver C6. There's the patent number for the scope. Maybe I'll put that up there too. El Paso, Texas. Woohoo! Nice. And uh, yeah, you know, it has this very distinctive. Mossberg, whatever you see one of these in the gun store on a 22, you always know it's an older Mossberg. And uh, yeah, this box mag is definitely uh, one of the ones featured in that article. But you see, like the three holes here, so it's a 10 rounder. Uh, I don't think this is, you know, any kind of triple K aftermarket thing or anything. They do sell them aftermarket, but I uh, don't think I don't think that this one is. I believe it to be uh, real. Oh, and what was I saying? Yeah, I was saying that this was all trashed. There's like a plunger in here and a spring. I had to adapt something of my own in here um, to uh, get that going. It's the plunger, the original plunger, but spring-wise, whatever, you can see how dog this was right here on the plastic. It was messed up. It was all locked up. They do sell the aftermarket plunger, the aftermarket. They even sell a wooden front piece for here. 
uh, aftermarket. I don't want to mess with any of that. I'm sticking with the original stuff. I just like to uh, I like to keep them as original as possible. Uh, a couple of interesting things that this guy has. It actually has, whether it, they meant it or it just happens to happen auto, by mistake, has a cocking indicator. I just decocked it by holding the trigger when I closed the bolt. And you'll see that here, the end of the cocking piece, the firing pin is fully recessed. If you're in a firing position like this, you can feel with your thumb very easily. Your thumb is right here for the safety. You can feel right here too. That there's a hole there nothing in the hole you don't feel anything protruding you know it's decocked and if you want to know that you have it cocked, not that it matters that much for a bolt action rifle kind of thing but just want to be sure it's not a loaded chamber indicator of course but you could feel with your finger that it's cocked you know what i mean if just in case you if you were going to carry it in the field let's say it's just a full mag and nothing in the chamber you could hold the trigger and close the bolt just to have the action relax. So this way, if you don't know if you chambered around or not, you could tell just by feeling here. If you don't feel a firing pin, you know, even if the chamber does happen to be loaded, pulling the trigger is not going to do anything. Um, again, like I said, I don't know how useful that is, but not many 22s have this exposed where you could feel that and you uh, you see that, uh, you know, that, that that's going on. And uh, let's... Uh, Maybe we'll uh, go in here. Let's check out to see what's going on inside. So with this, you know, even though these screws, they were really, a lot of these, they have this just this single screw for takedown. It always has a very fat slot in these screws. And I noticed that a lot of them, they're buggered. You have to watch it when you have like a sloppy bit in there. Thin bit. You, uh, most screwdrivers are going to be thinner than this. I even have, look, I even have this guy. It's a pretty, I'll use this most of the time. And if there, if, if I know it's a screw that doesn't have a lot of torque on it, I might even just use this, but you can see even this fat one, look at this. See that play in there? That's not, the screw's not turning. That's just play. And what happens, and look how fat this is. So what happens is the edges of the screwdriver, since it's flopping around so much, you only have the front and the back edge touching inside the slot and it makes two little depressions and uh sometimes i get rifles like that and i'll have those raised depressions and you tap them with a hammer and you, you could kind of push the metal back into place again kind of restore it that way but uh, look at this screw that's what you need there's a reason they put this guy inside your two your uh screwdriver case your screwdriver set even this one, tiny bit of movement, but just tiny. It's spreading out um, the torque. And again, this is a Wheeler set. Again, it's not incredibly tight, but if it was incredibly tight, you, you wouldn't even want that much play. But uh, it just stops these screws from getting messed up. They're only in nice shape once. If it's dogged already, I can kind of understand not caring, but this rifle happens to be in very clean, very nice shape. So you want to take the mag out before you try to take these actions out of the stocks. You never have to touch these plastic trigger guards or any of this stuff. It's usually just this one screw, and it's a captive screw. So it's not going to come all the way out. And then you just want to be careful when you take it out that nothing tweaks on the sides of the wood. And uh, there you go. We're out. So what are the things to look at in here? couple of interesting things. Um, number one is, uh, let's say, take a look at this safety here. Let's cock it first. Make sure that it's, uh, say, in position to fire. The safety, all the safety really does, if you look at it, is here's the trigger. Here's the trigger pull. Okay. Boom. All the safety does is go it has to be cocked. Safety just goes underneath the body of the trigger. It just all it is is just a physical block to stop the trigger from pulling. This is why when you look at these safeties, 
and when you start getting into these guns and actually looking at these safeties is what makes you not trust safeties. Um, I think I might have said in my last video, I, I don't like them. I don't use them. I don't like safeties. Like with the Mossberg, I said it didn't matter that it was on top of the Tang. People complained about it, but I didn't care. Uh, some I could have ma imagined a lot of backlash after I did that. I'm like, I shouldn't have said that, but nobody really said anything. But here's the reason why I feel that way. I feel that way just because I don't want to trust them. Because, like, look at this thing. It's like, this is how a lot of safeties are. It's it's not, it doesn't just mean that, that just that word. I, you know, I just don't even like the word. It, it's rendered safe. It's not. It's not. It's a mechanical device like anything else. And, and you see, just by looking down, if I pull the trigger, it could slip off the edge of that lock right there. I mean, it's only just a, just a, that's all, that's going to stop. That's going to be the difference between a gun firing or not firing in a compromising time where somebody's life could be at stake is you're going to trust this the edge of this trigger that it didn't wear out or that it's not all like you think it's on all the way but it's not when you pull the trigger it pops out of there that's what you're trusting it's like ridiculous this is why with a lot of these safeties again it won't go on unless it's cocked and the trigger's there but that that's what's rendering it safe just moving that underneath there I mean, this thing can, that can fail or it can slip out and not be adjusted properly. Hmm. Food for thought. Um, there's also here an adjuster, like for the trigger. Um, I don't really want to mess with it to show you what it does. It's firing now and it's in the right spot, but it definitely, you can see here, it's doing, so, it does something to adjust either the, after the trigger's pulled, like how much further it moves back. Or when it breaks, I guess, too. Maybe you'd be able to control. Who knows? And uh, this is what controls these Mossberg magazines. Let me tell you, that might look a little wonky. You're like, how's that going to locate the magazine properly? You also see some of the action down here underneath that functions here. You could see on the as the bolt closes here, you could see that last little bit of right there to bring it into battery. That's that last little bit that, uh, watch it again. Nice, very precise, you know, very, very precise. And like I said, the magazine, this does a really good job. They're very smooth, it locates the magazine. Look, there's, I'm trying to move it, look at it. There's no movement, look at that. It really works well. This. This design, and uh, once it's right, you leave it alone. Make sure you don't. That's why when you take these out of the stock and stuff, you got to be sure not to torque or bend or bang anything because just um, some of these are adjusted. Like this magazine, obviously, would be adjusted by bending this. You know what I mean? The, the right to be at the right angle, to uh, perfectly to be in there at the perfect angle. You know. So, uh, that's what it looks like inside. Should we, uh, should we cycle some snap caps through it? Let's put some snap caps through it. Why not? Let me put the stock back down. All right. So we got our, uh, realistic snap caps here. They're, uh, boy, these things taking some abuse. I'm telling you, I am putting these things through their paces. Here, we'll, we'll throw in four of them. I don't need to go crazy. Got a hair there. Let's not, let's not load a hair. Yeah, I am beating the crap out of these guys. And they're taking it pretty good. They are taking it pretty good. Must admit, very durable. So, you see, just coming up out of the magazine... It's like pointed directly where it needs to go. Look at that. I mean, come on. That's precise stuff right there. And uh, this uh, ejector here will definitely send these things far away. You got to take a look at that bolt. And let's see what exactly. I'm sorry. I, I have to cover it. I'd love to just send that flying. But... Uh, 
Trust me when I tell you. There's no way to do it easy. Even just trying to pull it back easy, look, it's like... It almost demands being... It's going to disappear. I got to just... I got to just hit it. I know you're like, come on, take one for the team. Show it on video. And uh, you're blocking it with your hand. It's like, I'm not searching for these things anymore. I can't do it anymore. This is one of those rifles that throws the brass really far. Um, very positive extraction and ejection. Um, and Mossberg was always good at that. And that's from uh, this bolt here. Having some, like, you know, focus and zoom problems today. Surprising. So, yeah, they always have these, like, dual extractors. And uh, the ejector, it's, it's in here. That's the ejector right back there, the square back there. And it rides inside this channel in the bolt. This channel, this one. And you see it protrudes out into where the rim of the case is to kick it out. And it's uh, it's strong. And it's a very positive ejection. It, it holds on to the extractors, hold on to the brass really good. So when it encounters the ejector, it uh, really has to push it hard to overcome those two clips, the one on either side. So the brass rockets. There's definitely very positive ejection going on. All right, let's uh, re-bed this guy back in the stock again. And again, you just want to be careful. You just want to look to see where the trigger goes, where the magazine goes. This is what uh, it screws into to lock it down. And just nice and easy. Find out its exact spot, which is right there. And uh, if this screw doesn't feel like it just goes right in, then you want to play around a little bit just to make sure you got the right spot. That feels like the right spot to me. And uh, this one happens to be, it just feels like this one is in like a younger condition. So the screw, everything comes together with this one nice and snug. Some of these are kind of sloppy and loose. They're just very old. They've been taken down a million times. They've been shot a million times. And, you know, they, where this lug goes through the wood starts to loosen up a little bit. The screw starts to loosen up a little bit. But this guy, nice and snug. Nice. And uh, shooting. Incredibly accurate. Look at how short this barrel is. Very short barrel. This is a tiny one. This is definitely a tiny one. But uh, accurate as I forget it. Anyway, this this scope. What I guess this is a six power scope. Unbelievably accurate. Um. Again, like I said, it. Uh, fed and extracted perfectly seems to like standard velocity cci i wouldn't uh, move into anything any more uh, powerful than that uh but for uh, 1953 to 1956 cool little window right there for uh for 22s i notice um doesn't matter what brand you're looking at that was a very cool time to be a 22 rifle. You had uh, a lot, there was a lot of interest in 22s back then. They were, uh, there were a million different advancements, a million different models. Everybody was coming out with one. And uh, Mossberg, especially, was really cranking out some quality product. And uh, I just couldn't have somebody at the range calling Mossberg. An awesome shotgun company without the uh, yeah i'm talking to you dude i'm talking to you without the uh, coming back 
with a couple of the exams. We're going to do like a back-to-back -back here. It's going to be a back-to-back -back Mossberg 22 Fest for you fans out there. A couple of guys have been asking for them too, the different models. Listen, I don't have every single one of these freaking things. So um, requesting a Mossberg 22 is enough. You start calling out like, I want a 159XB. It's like, look at the chances. Look at this list. I mean, look at this. Woo. That's a list, boy. And of course, you know, they moved into shotguns. I, this isn't my original list. I don't know what happened to that. I lost it. But I was like highlighting. Didn't matter anyway because the highlighter showed through onto the other side and it was confusing. I have to do it a different way. The highlighter wasn't working on there. I need something that doesn't go through the paper so I could really start getting like a list of the ones I have. You know, It's kind of like when you had baseball cards and you'd be like, need them, need them, got them. And uh, that's the story. That's the Mossberg 142K. And uh, stay tuned because like I said, Coming right back, we're going to do the one two Mossberg punch. And uh, see you all real soon.